Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about an object detection framework called YOLO. YOLO also expanded as you only look once. It's a very prominent object detection framework that supports very fast training and very fast inference. Now, if you've seen my previous video, I had walked through object detection using a framework called AutoGluon, which is an auto ML framework. Basically, we were able to easily install AutoGluon, get started with that custom object detection task. In case if you have not seen the video, you can click the link on the top. But in case of YOLO, there is a huge amount of effort required for the installation. You need to basically build the package uh, from source and also customize uh, the files during installation. So we are going in this video, we are going to focus on installing YOLO and then using YOLO for a pretty common task using a pre-trained model. In the subsequent video, we will talk about custom object detection using YOLO. But let's get started with the YOLO video. Before going there, object detection builds on top of image classification. And what it does is it seeks to localize exactly where in the image each object appears. Now you take like you give an input image. Basically, an object detection model will give you a list of bounding boxes. That is their XY coordinates. That class labels associated with each bounding box and the probability or a confidence code that is associated with the bounding box and class label. So I have an image with a person, an animal and a vehicle. Then it, it, it will be able to exactly classify that as a person in this particular image. And these are the bounding box. These are the XY coordinate uh, within the image the person is located at. These are the XY coordinate within the image a, a vehicle is located. Uh, so object detection basically try to localize on top of the image. Now when it comes to YOLO, what YOLO does is YOLO applies a single neural network to the full image. This network, in fact, divides the image into regions and predict bounding boxes and probabilities for each region. These bounding boxes are further weighted by the predicted probabilities. So that's what you a quick introduction to YOLO and object detection. So let's get started. Make sure, uh, make sure like you have your runtime set up to GPU in Collab. We may require GPU uh, for faster inference, but at the same time when installing, you need to, you may have to do some configuration changes uh, to make it run on GPU. We'll quickly check that out on how to do it. So I'm just saying the NVIDIA SMI, which will show uh, me uh, the, the processor that is allocated to me in the, uh, in Collab. So I have a Tesla T4 processor and my CUDA version is 10.1. Just no, uh, notice your CUDA version because you have to install QDNN uh, for similar, the matching your CUDA version, right? So that, that's that's uh, yeah, NVIDIA SMI. You can also type NVCC-V which will show you the CUDA compiler details that is available within Collab. Now, uh, as I said, we need to install QDNN. So Collab does not come with QDNN. And most of the framework that runs on top of, most of the neural network framework that runs on top of QD, uh, CUDA uses QDNN. If you take TensorFlow, PyTorch, they are all nothing but wrappers written on top of QDNN. So we need QDNN for YOLO to run on GPU. So what I'm going to do is, I have, I, what I've done is I've gone to the NVIDIA website I downloaded the QDNN package. You can also go to NVIDIA website, download, uh, search for QDNN, download the package, make sure you download for 10.51 version in my case. But if you have a different CUDA driver like 10.0 or 9, you download the respective package. So I have downloaded the package and kept it on my Collab drive. And uh, let me list the, my Collab drive, uh, which has QDNN. So if you see the, the my CUDA driver is uh, QDNN iPhone 10.1. There's a Linux uh, server that I have. And it's present in my content drive, my drive directly, right? So I'm going to uh, install uh, QDNN. I'd rather not install, just untar the package that I have got. Uh, I'm going to do that under user local package. So the CUDA package is by default installed under user local. I'm going to CD into user local and the package that I have QDNN, I'm going to tar uh, uh, the package, untar the package. So what it will do is it will untar it and put these particular libraries for QDNN. Within the case 64 is going to put all the SO file libcuda dnn and there is a cuda include uh, die which is the header file where you are going to have qdn.hh answer and enter include let me quickly do a ls on user local cuda you can basically uh, see in this case like these are the different uh, packages that are available uh, under user local cuda now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the uh, the top one cuda include qdnn.h 
and then I'm going to give an uh, read permission to all users. I'm doing just doing a ch mod, and then I'm I'm like printing uh, from the QDN edge. I am uh, printing like uh, this particular Q, QDN underscore major uh, uh, major version over there. That's what I'm doing. I'm just doing a cat. I'm gripping it from that. So once I do a cat, I'm gripping it. This is what I am uh, getting as output. So it says like my version of QDN is 7.6.4. So this major, minor, and patch level that is 7.6.4 is my version. Now let me go to my home directory, which is the loot folder. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download the darknet package from the uh, GitHub repo. Now darknet is the package for YOLO. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to GitHub and clone this particular repository. This repository has all the components required for YOLO. Uh, it contains the source so what we are going to do is we are going to take it and build it but before building the package we need to make some configuration changes uh, to run it on gpus and i'm going to do that and i'll show you like what those configuration are as well so let me do a git clone and what it is going to do is it's going to go into the git repo and then basically download all the packages you can see all the packages are downloaded let me quickly uh, do an ls and then you can see a folder called darknet folder. This has basically all the source code that is required. Let me cd into this folder, darknet folder, and then uh, within this folder, file called make file. So make file are typically used in um, used in your regular C++, C environment, or any other environment to build a uh, package, right? If you are comfortable with Java, it is similar to your Maven or hand script. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cat the make file and I'm going to tell you like what changes we need to make to run it on GPU. There are multiple changes we need to make. So the very first is if you see on the top, basically, yeah, here it is like, yeah, uh, this is by default going to build on CPU. So in order to make it run on GPU, you need to set this to one, the GPU equal to one. Uh, internally, it uses QDNN. Uh, you are going to set QDN equal to one. You can set QDNN into or if an off equal to zero or one. So basically, QDNN underscore off will speed up the process further if you have tensor cores. So if you have tensor cores, then you can set it to one. Uh, the most of the latest uh, GPUs have tensor cores. And then you set to OpenCV equal to one if you need OpenCV. If you don't need, you can just ignore it. Right. So yeah, there is also a comment within the make file which you can uh, check it out. Right. And you can make the changes. It's telling like set GPU equal to one to speed up on GPU and basically QDN equal to off and everything. Right. The next thing you are going to modify is the architecture. So yeah, again, there's a comment below. If you come below, if you are using a Tesla V100 GPU, then basically you need to set compute 70 and uh, the SM70 and compute 70. Basically, based on the GPU architecture, you are going to set some architecture parameters. Uh, by default, these architectures are enabled. But but if you have a V100 GPU or if you have a Tesla T4, then you need to add that particular command over here. So in this case, you need to add maybe Gen uh, Gen code architecture compute 70. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to do it, uh, but but I would say like uh, you try it out when you're doing it. Uh, just add this architecture also to compile for your respective GPU, right? That is one thing. And the final thing that you need to make a changes to the make file is basically if you scroll down uh, here, it is right because I have said QDNN equal to one, right? And uh, what if if the if the if your system is going to be a Darwin uh, based OS that is a Mac then by default it's set to local CUDA include. But in this case, in our case, like we downloaded uh, the QDNN package underscore user local CUDA, right? Uh, the older version of uh, QDNN had a separate folder, but the newer version does not have. So here, if you see, since ours is not a Mac OS, it's a Linux system, it will come to this step. But since there is no local user local QDNN on GPU, so we need to change this user local QDNN into user local CUDA. That's what we are going to do. So these are the different changes we need to make. So for that, what I've done is I've written some set command. So in the set command, what I'm doing is I'm searching within the make file. If the search is GPU equal to zero, make it GPU equal to one. If QDNN equal to zero, make it one. If OpenCV equal to zero, make it one. 
this is one uh, change I am making. The second change is I am searching for user local QDNN. The last one I spoke about. And if if basically the user local QDNN changing to user local CUDA because that is the place where we downloaded our CUDA package in the make file. So I am going to run this. Let us quickly visualize the make file now and make sure our changes are reflected. If you don't run it also, it's fine. It will run on uh, CPU. But since I want to show you GPU install, I'm showing this to you. So you, now you can see the GPU set to one, QDNN is set to one, OpenCV is set to one, right? And similarly, the other changes would have also got uh, reflected. Let me quickly go to uh, that particular uh, location. Uh, so to see if the folder is getting reflected. So if you see over here, the QDNN one, you can see basically uh, the folder structure changed to user local CUDA instead of user local QDNN, right? So we are good with the changes. Now what I'm going to do, my make file is ready. Now when I kick off the make command, it's going to take all the instructions from the make file and compile the package for us. So I'm going to run the make command and this make command is going to uh, go and uh, um, uh, basically build the source and finally it is going to give us an uh, uh, SO file. So SO file are Linux executable files uh, from which we can do predictions on darknet, right? Now, while this is going on, one more thing I'm going to do is, uh, the, if you see the YOLO package, it is, it is uh, already trained on some of the uh, open data set. That's the ImageNet data set, that's a Coco data set. It has been already pre-trained. So without much effort, right, if you want to just go into predict some classes that are already retrained on, you don't have to do anything. You just have to take that model and then uh, you call the methods to inference. But if you want to train on your custom data set, then you may have to uh, do a lot of labeling stuff and then uh, train the uh, train the train the pre take the pretend weights and then do fine tuning of the model and then use it. Right. So in this case, uh, first to show the example, I'm just going to use the pretend weight. But as I go into detail, I will do a custom training in the next video. So that's what I'm doing over here. So what I'm doing is from the GitHub repo, again, the same GitHub repo, I am downloading the YOLO 4 weights, which is a pre-trained weight, right? Now, if you see the top, it is complete. Uh, the final step must show G++ uh, this particular command uh, to show it is complete. If it is not showing and to show any error, then you have some issues, you need to go and fix it. But if you follow my steps, you should definitely be able to get it started, right? Now I'm going to download the YOLO v4 weights, which is a pre-trained weight. And let me just do an ls artist to see what are all packages available. This is going to take some time. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to use this particular YOLO package and then start um, uh, start inferencing on it. So if you see over here, this is the darknet uh, uh, package within darknet. This is not a package, this is a SO file which is built. And this is what we are going to use uh, to do all the inference on either videos or images or anything, right? So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download an image so that let's see like whether our compilation worked fine and whether the YOLO is going to be showing any output, right? So I'm just uh, going into the internet and downloading an image. I'm just doing a wget. Let me show the image. I am downloading it and let me uh, do a uh, print the image so that you can see. So this is the image I'm going to use within YOLO. And you can see there is a man that is riding a cycle. There are cars over here. There's a van over here. There's a woman walking over here. There are a lot of person, right? And uh, then if you go further top, you can see like signals and everything. So let's see like how good our uh, YOLO uh, package does with this particular image, whether it's going to, it's able to identify different uh, objects and whether it's able to properly do a rounding box on that. So what I'm going to do to execute the YOLO package, I am calling dot slash darknet, which is the uh, darknet executable we created, which I showed you. I'm calling a detector test, uh, right? I'm just testing on images. If you want to train, if you have your custom data set, you call train method, but here I'm calling text. I'm passing some configuration object. For now, don't worry much about it. I will talk about it when we go into the custom training. In this case, I'm taking the Coco data, which is the uh, Coco data set that is available. I am calling the config file of YOLO v4, which, nothing, which, which is nothing but it contains the architecture of the YOLO. So what is the convolution layer? What are the other layers within the YOLO architecture? You can see that getting printed when I call this method and the weights are the pre-trained weights that we downloaded. I'm telling the use the threshold 0.25. So any prediction where the confidence level is 0.25, display all those predictions. 
and then I am passing the image that we have downloaded. Let me run this. And once you learn this, as I said, you can see the architecture getting printed. It's just starting. Yeah, you can see it's on GPU, the count is, and all the convolution layer and all the architecture is getting printed. And finally, it prints a different objects that it has seen. It is seeing a person. It is seeing a cell phone, bicycle, handbag. If you see, we didn't notice cell phone. Like, uh, let's let's check it out where it is. Truck, car. There are multiple objects as detected. And finally, if you see. It has also failed it with a warning, right? Cannot open display. So what happens? By default, we installed OpenCV. So when 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 it's trying to execute this, it's trying it will try to open the image with all the bounding boxes using OpenCV. But we don't. Uh, but Colab does not by default support OpenCV rendering. So either you can go and modify it uh, to uh, modify the OpenCV package uh, with a function uh, to show the rendering. Or what I can do is I can disable it. I will show I will show you like how we can see it. We can disable it. I will show you how to disable it as well. And but for now, like these are the predictions, right? Now by default, once it runs, it's going to create an output file called predictions.jpg. So I'm just going taking the image and I'm displaying it. So once you see the output, it will show us what are the bounding boxes that are detected. So if you see over here. There is written Persia person. It has a bicycle. There's a handbag over here. There's a backpack over here. It does this. It looks wrong because it's jacket. It has detected as backpack. But it, there's a cell phone. You can see a woman is walking with a cell phone in hand. It has a cell phone. There's person. There's car. There's a truck. There's a truck here. There's a traffic light on the top. So it has done pretty good job over here and now detecting all the boarding boxes, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take more. Uh, this time I'm downloading a file from Shopify which contains like broccoli, orange, and apple. Uh, let me download it and then let's see the image. Um, so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow an additional step. So if you see over here, there's oranges, there's broccoli, there is apple, and I'm doing calling the same method, but only thing is I'm telling don't show. So when I say don't show, it's not going to try open the open CV for you. It's just going to leave it as it is, right? So we will not get that warning sign or unable to load sign that we got. Now let's run this and then let's see the prediction how it is. It's going to again load all the architecture and everything. And finally, if you see, there is no error at the end now. Uh, it has detected apples, broccoli, oranges. There are three oranges. So let's see the output prediction now. And you can see there is an apple, there are three oranges and broccoli, right? So basically what we have done is here we have installed YOLO. We have installed YOLO on GPU because the GPU inference is way faster than CPU. And if you enable the, uh, if you have tensor cores, you can even speed it up further. Then we just verified our installation. We downloaded the pre-trained weights and then we are trying to predict with that, right? Now we will take this further and we will train our own custom uh, object uh, from using YOLO and then we will see how it works. So let's catch up in the next video. Uh, that's it for now. Thank you.